hello and welcome to this tutorial on importing images into Lightroom. So the reason we're looking at the desktop is because I want this to feel like you're doing it yourself from scratch. So I didn't want anything to already be started. So first thing we're going to do is attach our um, card reader with our SD card from our camera to the computer. So you'll see that the SD card now appears and it's just called untitled, which is totally fine. The next thing we're going to do is open up Lightroom. So what Lightroom does is actually opens you up into the library and the last thing that you were playing with. And in this case, it's a picture of Delicate Arch. But we're not going to do any processing on this. What we're actually going to do is choose down here in the bottom left-hand corner of the library panel, and it says Import. So we'll go ahead and select that. So once you actually hit import, your uh, Lightroom will go about trying to figure out what you're trying to import from. And if you were to have a, your camera actually attached, it would locate that up here as well in the sources. And the other thing it shows you are other sources that are available to you. So it's sort of identified title, untitled, excuse me, as a device, but you can also see that it's identifying any of the hard drives that I have attached to the computer. So, and the fact that these are not filling in is just that it's taking time so that's not a problem. So now that we have um, our untitled selected because that's the SD card we are going to copy which is up here at the top our images. Now when we say copy it's because we're actually telling it to add it to another location either another hard drive or on the hard drive whatever you prefer. So the way I like to do this is let Lightroom do the legwork for me where it actually makes my second copy so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say, choose make a second copy. And this is from the file handling side on the right hand side of the um, Lightroom. The other thing that I always choose is to um, don't import selected duplicate. So had I had other images on this SD card that I had already imported, they would be ignored. And I don't wanna import them twice. Then the top part here, it says build previews. I've actually gone with minimal. In the past, I used to do standard, but I actually find that they're just a little bit large and I don't open every file. And because I don't open every file, I don't need to really waste the space or time on creating large um, previews. Build smart previews is actually about when you wanna um, use a file that you're not attached to. So for instance, if I wanted to import these and build smart previews, if I wanted to then disconnect the hard drives and say this was on a laptop and take that laptop with me and I wanted to process images on the plane, I would need smart previews to do that. Since I don't do that and I just choose not to have that part of my workflow, I don't ever build smart previews. They're huge and they take up a lot of space. So if you don't need them, then I would just advise not to bother. Um, file renaming, I actually don't do. You can see that there's nothing selected here. I just leave the files named um, as they come out of the camera. The next thing is apply during import. I don't choose to apply any uh, presets during the import. That's again, just a part of my process. This next thing is metadata. And you can see here that I have selected my metadata. Now, if you are new and this is the first time you're doing it, you can actually create metadata for yourself by choosing new. And when you choose new, you're gonna come in and you're gonna get this um, dialog box, this, this wizard basically. You're gonna go ahead and give it a name. In this case, we'll just call it new preset. And then you decide which information you're gonna put. So in this case, um, if you're not actually sending your images off to copyright, I actually don't bother with the copyright status because it's actually asking whether or not they're actually uh, registered. Um, you can put your name it in the copyright area here. So if we're going to go do that, we can just start. You're the creator, so you want to go ahead and add that. You might want to put your city that you live in and the state. Whoops, not California. You can put the postal code, the country. You might want to put a contact number here. You're going to want to put your email address. And if you have a website, add this as well. Um, that way, this data is actually going to get buried within each file. So this is good information to have. So once you've got all your information set, you just choose Create. And then you would select it from the drop down. Now, because I've already got this, I'm just going to go ahead. Now it says None. I'm going to come back in and just choose my metadata because all that information has already been built for me. So this next thing is keywords. And I would advise you to add keywords on a very high level at this point, unless it's really clear um, what each, each shooting session was about, then there's no need to get too detailed. So for instance, I know that this was all macro um, or close-up photography. So I might only put this 
those two particular keywords here. Because if I go too crazy, if I put shell, then here where it's the little um, widgets, the widgets aren't shells. And if I scroll down, the widgets aren't um, circuit boards, they're not agate, and they're not feathers. So at the same time that they all were shot in a macro style, these are not all the same thing. So for me, it doesn't make any sense to add more keywords. So just depending on what you were shooting, this is a great opportunity to get some keywords in early. And it might be even about location. So if you went out and shot Eagles at Conowingo Dam, then you might say Conowingo Dam or Maryland just because those are easy high level location things that go to every image, even though not every image may be an eagle. So that's just an idea there. So for destination, um, well actually let's go back up to make second, second copy. Interesting thing about Lightroom is they put the second copy on top, which doesn't really make a ton of sense, but you wanna go ahead and you're gonna need to do this for each one unless you have one standard place for files. But in this case, um, I like to make a new backup for everything. So you go ahead and click on the um, line here that says uh, the name of where the second copy goes to. So I'll do it again. And then you wanna figure out, well, where am I gonna send it? So I actually have a disk for a uh, terabyte for backup. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say backup. These were taken in Virginia. So I like to do things by state. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And then I'm going to go ahead and say new folder. And in this case, I'm going to say it's a macro file and I'm going to say create and then I'm going to choose it. So now what I'm telling Lightroom to do is make one copy of all of these images into this backup. Now I need to determine where I want the actual files to go. So what you will see here is a mere representation of all of the hard drives that we also saw on the far left for sources, but this time they're destinations. So for me, I put all of my 2013-14 uh, images in uh, a different terabyte, separate from my backup, which you can see is down here. So in this case, I just took them this year, so they're 2014. I'm going to click Virginia again, and this time, if you right-click, you can say Create Folder or Create New Folder. So go ahead, looks very much the same. I'm going to hit New, and I want to call it the exact same thing. And I just do this so it's easier for me to find them if I need to. I say create, and then I say choose. So now I've done everything that I need to do for Lightroom to figure out where the images need to go. And that's about it on this side. And I think I'm ready, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say import. And you can see we go back to the library because we can be working while this is importing. And if you look in the top left, you'll see the um, little status bar going across kind of slowly so i'm actually going to hit pause until this is done but until then i'm going to have just a couple of things to explain if you want to see what's actually happening in your import you can actually come in and find the file and you can watch the number change and you can also see the files populate so you can see that the things are actually working in the background um, while the status bar is moving forward Okay, now we can see that Lightroom is nearly done importing and has finished. So really kind of the next step or how I would approach this uh, next step is I would start selecting things and actually doing some keywording. So here I've selected the first image in the entire uh, folder and I select down to here because these are all shells and I might come back here now and say shell. Sometimes when you've used words before, these things kind of go crazy. Okay, so shell. Um, and whatever else, I might say spiral. Now the thing that you I would suggest doing is to actually get kind of creative. And sometimes, you know, try to think about whether or not something speaks to you in a different way. So it's some it's easy to do keywords that are super obvious, but do they evoke emotion? And in this case, I'm not gonna go through this whole process, but you get the idea. So I would go through all the shells and say shells and spirals and rule of, uh, golden ratio or all, all these other things that might come to mind. Um, I might come down here, talk about compass faces and sprockets. I might select these and say circuit boards, computers, soldering, um, and so on and so forth. And then once you've kind of done all the obvious things, think about whether or not any emotion come to mind that you might be able to then use this if you were interested in putting your images out for like say stock photography. Because stock 
photography may be looking for compass faces or peacock feathers or agate, but they also look for ideas. They want messages to be conveyed. So keywording can be a great way to facilitate future keywording or having your keywords available, whether you put your images on Flickr, Facebook, 500 pics or stock photography, anything that you keyword here is going to carry uh, out when you go and export. So that's just an idea. The other thing is, is the more you keyword, Lightroom will um, save keywords and they have suggest, you know, they'll pr provide suggested keywords. You can do keyword sets. So there's a lot of information that gets collected as you go through the process. Um, there's some quick edits that you can do in the library module, as well as finding your metadata. So here's the metadata that I added uh, in the um, where I showed you how to create your own metadata, as well as the information that uh, resides in the file to begin with coming out of the camera. If you have services attached like Flickr and there's comments that get built into that, then once you've uploaded and you've synced your Lightroom um, to Flickr, it will actually retain the comments here for future reference. So that's it in terms of how to get your um, images into Lightroom. One of the things I like to show you uh, is a trick of mine because in this particular case, I actually shot JPEG and RAW, but I like to process my RAW files primarily. So one of the things that I like to do is to sort these and color code them. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First, we're going to go ahead and choose text. So this is a way of filtering. This little bar here gives you some uh, choices for filtering. So I choose text, and in this case, I'm going to say file name, and I'm going to look for ends with. And I am going to put the raw file. Now, a RAF is a raw file for Fuji, and I shoot Fuji. So now what I've done is I've actually selected all of the raw files in this folder. I'm going to go ahead and do, choose Command or Control A to select all. So you can see everything is now selected. With my cursor or the mouse over one of the images, I'm going to right click and choose color label. And for me, I make my um, raw files purple. And there's no particular reason, it's just a preference. So next, I'm going to come through and I'm going to erase the RAF and say JPEG. Now you'll see that none of the files are selected, none of them are purple, and that's because these are all the JPEG files. So again, going to do the same thing, select them all, Command or Control A, right click, and in this case, I'm going to color code them green. Actually, let's color code that yellow. I'm trying to be consistent. There we go. So yellow. Now, these are all JPEGs. When I go ahead and I choose the X here, or I say filters off, you can now see how I have easily identifiable JPEG and RAW files. So if I want to go start to process, I don't actually accidentally pick up the wrong one. So the next thing I might do is actually go through and decide if there's a particular image I like better than another image. So I would go by rating. And in, at a quick glance, I mean, I haven't gotten into the details and I can always crop, but I guess at a quick glance, I'd say, well, this image that I've selected is a RAW file. It has some keywords in it. That's why this little uh, tag is here. And I'm going to go ahead and rate it as a one because I actually like the fact that I didn't have any corners. You know, here you can see a little black corner. Here you can see two black corners. Well, this one, I filled the frame. So if I was going to sit down and actually just start to process, I'd probably pick this image first. Now I would go through actually having these bigger and to make them bigger, you can just double click them. And I would start going through this process without giving a lot of thought to how the image looks, uh, you know, other than um, just trying to decide if I want to bother with it. Now I have a little corner, but that's easy to fix. And I would start going through the entire file and just identifying things with a one that I might want to come back and look at later. The reason, and, and just as an example, I'll go ahead and I'll choose this one as well, just so you can see why. Then I can come back afterwards and say, okay, now I want to filter by rating. And I want only the things that I've selected as a one. And I use this to refine. So now I might come in and look at all my ones and say, well, you know what? I like this one. I want it to be a two. Then I would choose filter by twos. Now I have all the images that I like a little bit more. And I would go through this process until I feel like I've gotten, you know, a hundred or a thousand images down to 10 or 15 that I care about processing. And then I would go about processing them. So this is just a way to refine the selection, remember which ones you liked, and then not have to be caught up with all these other images that you kind of like, 
what you're not ready to process. So that's what I use sort of the ratings for. The next step for me at this point would actually be to process and use a couple different ways you can process. Like I mentioned before, you can use these quick develop and uh, edits here. I've, um, I don't actually tend to use these. If I was going to work in Lightroom, I would take it into the develop module, which is up here in the top, uh, up on the top second uh, module over is develop. And this is a form of camera raw. So certainly a great tool if all you're going to do is process your single image and you're not expecting to have to use layers. For me, though, I tend to prefer to work within Photoshop because then I can make a decision to use my plugins um, should the desire arise. So I would actually right click and choose edit in and take the image into Photoshop directly. Takes a second, Photoshop opens up. And there we go. So from here, you know, I'm just going to go about process, processing my image. When I'm done processing my image and I hit save, and I'll, I'll do something just, you know, quick because that way you'll sort of see what I'm talking about, how it brings it back in. All right, so all I did was add some um, contrast, brightness and contrast. I want it to be notable. Whoops, can't do that on a single layer want it to be noticeable so when I take it back into Lightroom you can see what I'm talking about. So, and I'm actually going to do the contrast from here. Now I'm not going for anything kind of perfect here. I am simply just trying to make enough of a change in this uh, image so that you can see how it looks and that it looks different from its original. So now that I've done some processing, I'm going to go ahead and save. You can just do Command or Control S. The image will save. You can see in the top right that it was counting. Now that it's done, I can go ahead and close the image in Photoshop. And I can either close Photoshop or just hide it. And now you'll see I have two images here. This is the original, and this one is the edited. And you can see in the bottom that it says Edited TIFF. So the cool thing about the way that Lightroom and Photoshop work together is that when you're done processing, Lightroom will absorb that right back in to the library, which means now you can move forward. If I thought this was a done image, I might come in here and go ahead and just make it a five. And I use five not because it's fabulous, but more so because then I know I finished with it. Then when I'm done with all the photos I want to process in a particular folder, I just say show me all the fives and then I can export these and um, or share them on on Facebook or Flickr both of which I have access to here on the navigation side of the library because I've had service I've added these services so I could actually just drag this and drop it into my Flickr stream and it'll automatically post for me to uh, my library in in Flickr so it's a great tool and it's a great way to organize and stay organized and manage your files now in this case I'm only seeing the one that's uh, rated as a five if I want to get back to the entire library all I need to do is come back up to where it says custom filter and choose filters off and then I've got all my images back and available to me again so that's the nuts and bolts and how to navigate in Lightroom in my next tutorial I'm actually going to demonstrate how to add a watermark on your export and how to create your export um, pre presets. So thanks again for watching. Hope to see you soon. Take care.